was recently at a garden event in London and I caught up with you Richards. While we was chatting he kindly offered to send me a couple of his sample trays, the ones that recently released through uh, container wise. They've arrived, I've got the, that's a 10 cell one and this is a 20 cell. As you can see, decent size holes at the bottom and quite tough. And what I'm going to be using the, the 10 cell ones first and the first things I'm going to be sowing in there is uh, spring onions and this variety is my favourite one and it's called ramrod. So let's get sowing. Like most people I put a pinch of seed in, usually six to eight seeds and just let them grow like a, a normal bunch you'd pick from the supermarket. Compost a bit dry so I'll give them a spray in before I fill the holes in. I'll fill the holes in, give it another spray. And while I was in the spring onion mode, I've sown another one. That one there is called Apache, and it's like a red version. If I've got a photograph, I'll pop it up. In the meantime, I'm going to put these in one of the large unheated divider pods. I'm going to start sowing some cress, so I'll give the tissue paper a good soak in first. Cress is always a good starter for anybody. I can remember as a kid sowing these on a saucer in school and being amazed at how quickly it grew. Hopefully this will do the same. <laughs> March for me is the, usually the start of the season for sowing the flowers. The first one I'm doing is the sweet peas. I've had these seeds no, four or five years now. Originally there was from Andy, in memory of his late mother, Hilda's mix, and I say I'll save the seed each year. I'm getting less and less, so I might have to save a bit more this year. But what I do with these, and also anything really what's got a hard skin on it, like peas, beans, sweet corn, for me I like to soften them overnight in water, just makes the shell a bit soft from cheat a little bit easier. Some people get a little pen knife and nick the side, others people don't bother. It's whatever works for you, but for me, I do that. And uh, normally I'll sow my sweet peas in the root trainers. So I'm doing them somewhat similar this year. But these, I found these in the garden centre. They've got quite a different range here. These are called Grouchier. They look like root trainers as well, but first thing, they've got uh, transparent, so you can actually see the root growth. And the other thing, you know, when you clip them together, the base is flat, so they'll actually stand up on their own, like that. So I'm going to give these a try and see how we get on. I'll just get some compost mixed and we can start cracking. One thing worth mentioning before I start sewing is the drainage on these cells. Each one has got a pre-cut horseshoe shape on the bottom, and as that is, that would actually provide a drainage. But I've gone one step a bit farther and actually pushed the flap right the way in. As you can see, that's provided a fairly decent drainage hole, and that's why I'm going to be doing all of them. I've done 20 cells all told with a couple of seeds in each. As you can see in some of them, the seed has actually started chitting with the soaking, and for me that works quite well. I've got a little carried away with those uh, sweet peas. <laughs> Put eight cells in there, fitted nicely into a normal size seed tray, and filled them all. And I still had a few sweet peas left over, so some of them cells have actually got three and four seeds in. Staying on the sweet pea front, I've got this packet here, and this one's called Patio Mix. Now this only grows um, 12 inches, 30 centimetres high, so I've got this terracotta pot here. I filled it up with um, spent potato compost and I thought I'll pop some of these in there and it'll be nice to have out on the patio in the summer. I've bodged some owls in there already, not sure how many seeds there is. There's probably 25, 30 owls in there. I'm going to pot the uh, tomatoes on now. They've started to go a bit leggy. Originally I was going to put these into cell trays but as it is the right these are growing I'm going to put them into these about seven centimeter pots. Um, compost I'm using is the Bathgate's multi-purpose. I've added 
the Mickey light and also some charge as well because a bit of extra food. When I've potted these on, they'll be going into the, the void pod, which I've put on at 10 degrees, although with the days later on at night, that hasn't been kicking in at all. We have had some cold nights, and probably most of you across the country have had snow. I think tonight we've got minus four forecast, but as I say, the days later is keeping this ticking out around about 12, 13 centigrade, no problem at all. So, let's crack on. As you can see, these are quite long. But not to worry, I'll just bodge a hole down the bottom of the compost, pop that in, as you can see, drop it right way down, just fill the hole with compost. I'll always give these a water, so potted the one, I always give them water from below rather than from the top. And then, as I said before, they'll be going into the vital pot. There they are potted on, 16 Crimson Crush. Just a little word of warning, as I was potting the first batch of these on, I got called in for some lunch, and I left them in the pots just on the bench. And by the time I come out, you can see how some of them have wilted. I've given them a good spray, and uh, put them back in the propagator, build the humidity up, and hopefully they'll pick up. And while I was on the potting on mode, I decided to do these other little cherry tomatoes there. Five on the left are called Sun Cherry, and the ones on the right are the Tumbler. They were small enough to get them into the little cell trays. Still got a few more things to pot on here. As you can see there, and there's some of the peppers at the back, doing well. I've got you in the depths of the Vitapod. These are the brassicas. As you can see, they're in dire need of potting on. So let's get going. This is a mixture of cabbage, cauliflower, I think there's a bit of sweet in there as well. You can see some have already started flopping over past the advanced stage of potting on. But as usual, I'll just pot them a bit deeper and they'll soon be alright. That's the first couple of trays of brassicas pricked out. On the right there, we have the cauliflower clapton. And on this side, we have Brussels sprout crispus. So I put them in these seven centimetre pots, but if you notice, I put them in these 15 cell trays here. And I find they have two benefits on there. First of all, if I want to water them, I can just lift the old tray out, put them in a the tray of water, let them take the water from beneath. But the other thing is, once they've started to pick up again after the repotting, I'll probably be moving these into the coal greenhouse on the allotment, or maybe even the coal frame. Have a little pause from uh, breaking out the brassicas and Looking at these tomatoes, they've started putting a growth spurt on, so I think it's about time to pot them on. As you can see, there's a crimson cherry on the left, and on the right side is one called Summer Last. A quick look into the Voiter pod, and there's the tomatoes we potted on yesterday, and they said we're doing okay. And they're the brassicas that we did. And uh, although that was a bit droopy when we first put them into the Voiter pod, you can see they've picked up overnight. While we're on about the Vitapod, I just want to have a quick word. After you know, I've got these Vitapods. In fact, I've got three of these large double height ones and a little single one. And um, the last one of these I purchased was just, I think it was a year last November. And I bought it in a hurry, really, because I've got quite a few onions and seedlings with nowhere to put them. So I bought it, set it up, but I only set the one layer up. Used that, perfect. So I'll come this year, I've got the three of these in action, although there's no heat on them. I've got one in the conservatory with all my onions in, and I'm just using these to put plants on as they develop. But I'll come to build the second level of this. And if you know the Vitapod, it's got a long side and a short side. Well, when I come to build it, I'd been sent short sides. So if you join them together like that, you'll see there's an inconvenient gap at the end, right at the end of here. And uh, so I was thinking first, what am I gonna do? I did a patrolling on the net and I found the company was actually purchased, the Nutriculture Company, which was part of the Greenhouse Sensations. Uh, found them up and they said they got no firm plans yet for these products. So I was thinking, I'll put a bit of wood in as a spacer, that would be unsightly really. 
And then I thought I'd spent almost 40 years on a CAD system. <laughs> so I got my computer out. I've got no software on there now, but I went on the internet and there's uh, some free CAD, CAD software available. So I actually modelled a little spacing piece, what fits in here. And it's, it goes in line with actually the shape of this. I even put my little logo in the middle. I'll put a bit of film up at the side. And uh, I've mod solid modelled that. And I've passed it on to a good friend of mine who's got a 3D printer. And he's going to print me some. So when that comes back, we'll get it in action. I'll show you. As we approach the middle of March, it's now. I usually look at sowing some of the more, what I'll call the tender stuff. And these are me cucumbers, and I've also got the dreaded courgettes. Uh, I'll probably only grow two courgettes this year. I'm well, saying that though, I usually get over of them. But the cucumber I'll be growing is me old little lunchbox favourite, and that one's called Mini Munch. I'll probably be doing, well, there's only four seeds in here, and I've got half a packet here. So if I can get six of those, I'll be happy. And I'll be show, sowing them in these uh, HR10 cell trays in there. Compost is the old bathgate's multi-purpose and I've added vermiculite. I'm just making a fine little slit in the compost to pop the seed in. Hopefully it will keep them on the side and reduce the risk of rotting. The compost is already moist. I bought about, I think it was eight bags of this and uh, I left them out in the garden when we had all that rain. I didn't put them under cover. It's not going into the compost, the rain hasn't, it's just that it's like moisture in there. But so uh, I've actually moved them away now under cover. Anyway, I'm just going to pop these seeds in, just drop them in that little slot like that. I'll give them a poke down. I said I was only going to do two, but in the end I've done four cores. You can always give them away if some person hasn't got one or doesn't know the consequences. <laughs> Well, we're still in the sowing mood. It's about time we got some flowers underway. And I'm starting off with my dahlias. Normally I've got these going by the probably middle, late February, but never mind, they'll soon catch up, hopefully. Uh, three varieties to start off with. There's a pom-pom variety here. That one's from a Wilco. It's just mixed, nice colours. Next one here is a DT brown one, dahlia, and this one's called the Bishop's Children. One of my favourite dahlias is actually called the Bishop of Landaff. It's a lovely deep red colour, but these are quite nice. And bringing up the rear is this one from Sutton's, and it's called Red Skin Mix. Story behind this one, a guy who we used to work with, who was also a keen gardener, and we'd often, quite often swap notes and what we'd been doing and that. And he came round to bedding plants, and he told me to try these. And I'd got a lovely board right at the front house at the time. So I bought these and I flowered the hearts out right up until probably the second or third frost. They kept going in the first frost. And uh, if you're ever looking for a nice, nice dwarf flower to try, give these a go. And they're called Red Skin Mixed. I'm just tidying these little supports up. I made these out of fairly tough wire. And what I use, I'm using them as supports for my onions. When they get about that high, they'll sometimes flop over. So I'm just popping this in the soil, push the leaves through, gives them a bit of support and helps them out. Right, I'm going to carry on and pot on these ever impatient brassicas, what keep growing. I've still got quite a lot to do. There'll be one or two more videos a bit more frequently because I have filmed quite a lot just recently. And rather than bore you with air and half epic, I thought I'd chop it up into uh, bite-sized chunks. So uh, many thanks for watching again. If you haven't already subscribed, there's a little button down in the corner. And if you press the bell also, it'll let you know when I upload a new video. So until then, many thanks for watching. See you later. Bye for now.